Hello, everybody. Today I'm going to do another version of those poppies, which I think is kind of fun. It's um, wet on wet, like we did yesterday, but it's a little bit different. And I actually like playing with this type of style too. So I'm going to show you, and I think this is a real easy one for most of you uh, as well. So I'm going to be working on wet on wet. I did tape down my paper because um, I think I said in yesterday's video, when I work wet and wet, I tend to tape it down to keep it from warping and things like that. And um, I'm going to today use my, let's see, supplies. I think I'll use my number seven Degato. Let me see if I have my, uh, I don't have my Princeton brush handy here. I do have my eight round Princeton brush, so I'll use that. So let's just go through, these are gonna be the colors I'm using today. So I've got this cad red that I will use. Um, so there we go. And then I'm gonna, I always play with the values, just meaning how light and dark. I like to see how light I can get. So there you go. This is the least amount of water, more pigment. This is the most amount of water. So I can play with all of these in that range. So these are much lighter. These I have more pigment, so they're a darker value. And then I'll also be using my cad orange. Let me just get that here and put that in my palette. There we go. So this, um, by the way, this uh, Princeton round brush. This one, I usually use the Velvet Touch. This is a Neptune. It's much softer, which I really don't like. I like the uh, springier, a little bit stiffer brushes myself. And the softer brushes do hold a lot more water too. And I hold about right here, quarter of the way up. So there's the orange I will be using. Let me just add some water and play with those values again. And I'm just adding more water, scraping off till it gets lighter and lighter. So there you go. Those are the main two colors. I'll probably use a little bit of this cad yellow in there as well. And actually what I like to do is kind of create an orange from my cad yellow and my uh, cad red because I always think that's prettier than using cad orange straight out of the bottle. And then my sap in my olive green is the green I always use. I kind of make my own mix of that. So there's that. Let me rinse my brush and go into it with some water and just pull out until I get to that lighter hue. So basically these three colors I will have in the middle. Uh, I don't use paint or just a black black. I like to use Payne's Gray, which has a little bit of a bluish tint to it. And I like that it's not quite as harsh or stark. And then adding water to my brush and kind of scraping off and pulling it out. Although I won't be using lighter values of that color because, um, let me use my reference sheet here, because I'm just basically going into the middle of my flowers with that. Uh, let me get my reference painting I did already. Here, okay. All right, I've already, I'm using Winsor Newton paints today. So cad, or, cad red, cad orange, cad yellow, um, and then the olive and sap green. 
and my Payne's Gray for the middle of those flowers. I've got my sprayer here. I've sprayed all my paints to activate them. I'm using the tube paints, Winsor Newton. And the brush strokes that I will be using, we kind of went over yesterday. Um, we'll be doing wet and wet, but the brush strokes I'm going to be using are those strokes with the side of my brush. Poppies are quite round, all the leaves. So maybe just practicing going from the side like this, something like that. And then of course, poppies always come into kind of this bowl shape at the bottom. So I'm just using the tip of my brush for that. And some of those will be kind of doing some petals along the back. So keeping in mind that that poppy is pretty flat and like that cup shape. And you know, it's always about getting the shapes right. And then here in the back, just creating those petals as they come out, something like that. Use some of that orange. So these are the brush strokes that we'll be using. And again, we'll be using that wet in wet. So holding your brush parallel to the page, it's a little bit different grip than when you're using the tip of your brush. You're more like parallel to the page and holding it sideways. And then I always like to go in, just maybe practicing that while it's wet and letting that blend just like that. So do a few brush strokes using the side of your brush. I think that could be really helpful. And then getting your paint ready in your palette uh, before you start to paint because we will be doing wet and wet. So it's good to have, um, to have your paints ready so you can go right in. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. And this is gonna be a little bit different technique. It's another wet and wet, but um, it's, if you see in my practice painting here, I've got these, it kind of gives the illusion of these um, poppies back in the background. And that's because it was all wet in a very light value. So we're gonna practice that. So let me grab, a nice flat, this one, boy, that's an old one. Robert Simmons, boy, that's a really old one. I think I have had this, I don't even know how long, long time. Um, and I'm using a towel today instead of my typical paper towels to blot my brush. So let me just stick that under my water. I've got my two waters, one to wash, one to rinse. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I've got a very light pencil drawing here. Um, if you like, I can go over it. It's just gonna give me some reference. Now, of course, when I do it right now with a pen, it's going to show through. So use your pencil, but Again, poppies are like a cup shape. And then this one is just really kind of the side like that. And this one too is going to be the side and maybe a few showing up in the background and then our little buds. So don't use a pen for yours because um, it will definitely show through your paintings. And there we go. So these are, and if you do decide to use a pen, 
Make sure it's uh, not water soluble because of course, um, you know, that would, uh, once the watercolor hit it, it would go all over the place. Okay, so let's give this a try. I'm going into my clean water. I'm using quite a round brush. Gosh, this one is really, it's been through the ringer. I don't even know what size it is. It says a one. Um, and I'm just using it because I want to create, get everything wet and it's a little bit <clears throat> broader and flatter. The other option you have is you could just spray your paper like that and then go with your water across your page, okay? So again, we don't want puddles. It's just shiny, all right? And then I'm going to go in, I'm gonna start now with my number eight, now that everything is shiny. And let's go into, are today I'm going to go ahead and use that cad red and you want it kind of watery but not crazy so it's not dripping if you really feel like you might have too much because we want to build layers here we don't want um, to go in with our strongest color first so you can always just tap it and mine was good and then I'm just gonna go in with the side of my brush and laying down some color. Just like that, you're gonna let it spread. That's what we want. If it's a little bit too bright like that, you can pick it up. And let's go in here. So we're going with somewhat of a light value and we're just getting these shapes in here, all right? Just like that. Okay, and then let's go in and use our orange, our cad orange. So you pick some of that up. And we're working rather quickly because you don't want this once it dries, then we're not going to get that effect that we want. And while this is wet, I'm going to go in and drop in just a little bit of color here to kind of spread. So it's not so wet anymore. That's why this is not spreading in here. Let's get a little bit of that red. So what I need to really do is go in and maybe get this wet again because I want it to be blurry in the background. Okay, just to give that resemblance of flowers in the background. We don't want it too bright, all right? And then I'm going to go in because this will be eventually um, uh, kind of a field almost of poppies. Let's just go in. Now see, that's pretty dry. So I'm not getting this spread I want. I'm gonna go back in and kind of get a lot of this wet. While these are wet, I'm going in with my green and just using the tip of my brush, going in and letting this spread, just like that. Okay, so that's all I wanna do so far because I really wanna get this wet again and go in, I'm gonna pick up a little orange, kinda of mix this in something like that. In my poppies, I always try to leave a little bit of white space in there so that some red, um, so that I can put that black center. And then this, I wanna get that back part. 
Now, as you can see, this is drying, so I'm not getting that really pretty spread. So I'm gonna go in and put a little bit more water. Make sure, by the way, you have clean water because otherwise it's just going to put a color on your paper of whatever color your water is. Okay, so I'm just getting some of this wet in the background so I can kind of create some more flowers in the background. So let's go in with maybe some cad yellow and it's that tea consistency. And again, you know, this wet and wet, you kind of have to work fast because otherwise, if it dries, then you lose that beautiful spread that we want. So I know I'm working a little bit faster here, but I almost have to, otherwise I will lose that. Okay, I think I like that. What I'm going to do is go in and get this wet in between these and create. So I'm just going in with clear water here. In between as much as I can without touching too much the other things. And then I'm gonna go in and just use the tip of my brush and just do this type of thing. There we go. And same with these. And I'm just creating as if there's a lot of these poppies all around, okay? I think we could do another poppy right here. So let's get that wet, because we want that blushy feeling. Like this. And then I'm gonna add in a poppy right here, use my red, but I'm using a very light value. So more water. and just creating that, there we go. And then I might do a stem and I want it to kind of be washy like that, okay? Because we can always darken. And this is really utilizing glazes. So once these um, continue drying, I go in and add more and more detail to them, to a few of them here and there. So we've got, um, let's go into this one and just add a little bit more of a darker value. So I'm gonna pick up my red. And this time I want the pigment to be a little stronger. So I am dabbing off my brush using the side of my brush. So holding my brush parallel, just like that. And maybe here, like that. We can go into maybe this one, like that. So I'm just kind of pulling out certain ones. Hold on, I'm uh, pulling up my reference photo of poppies in our neighborhood. Okay, so as you see, this is what's called layers and glazing. So I'm letting this dry and then I'm going in and adding some layers over the top. Okay. And look how pretty that is. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of splattering 
in the background. It's not real wet, but because I feel like that kind of adds to it. And then let me go in with some yellow here. So I'm grabbing my CAD yellow. And that has quite a bit of water. And then let's go in and kind of divine some of these. There we go. Okay. Now I'm gonna let some of that dry. I think I'm gonna darken these leaves in the front. There we go. So that kind of gives the illusion they're more in the front here and pulls them out. Now I'm gonna go in because we're working wet and wet and add in some of my Payne's Gray just to the bottom here, like that, and kind of let it blend. Look how beautiful that is. And it really gives you that feeling of a poppy. So it's important when you're painting to, you know, you don't always have to paint perfect. It can be representations because I feel like this right here, you know it's a poppy because of these characteristics. So I'm gonna go in here and add in that little center area. This one's got a center, just like that. And then I think I will go in more and add in some darker value, um, stems because that will bring them out and make them look like they're closer because right now all the stems kind of look like they're in the background so let's go in I've got a pretty dark color and I'm going to pull a few of those out so the ones in here that are a darker value are going to be closer. The others are gonna look like they're in the background. Okay, so these, we want to stand out. And I'm just using the tip of my brush like that. Let's bring this one here. That's a little bud. There's a little bud. Maybe another bud here, like that. Okay, look how beautiful. So this is very washy. Now let me add in a little bit of the color going into my red and just touch in there. like that and let it spread. I feel like I want to add a little bit more green in the background here. Maybe something like that. Yeah, I like that. So I think I'm kind of done with this. I might Go in, just add touches of that yellow, that CAD yellow, just to get a little bit more. But I think that's pretty good. I feel good about that. Yeah, I feel good. Now you can always um, go in and let me add a little bit of green here so this flower doesn't look like it's floating. Just kind of like that. There we go. I'm gonna add a tad of black in the middle of that one. Just to show maybe the center. 
Now, if you didn't like how that just spread like that, you can just pick it up. Something like that. Okay, the other thing I think I'll do is I'll go ahead and give this some splatters. I'm going to use, let's see, let's use some black. Don't want too much because it could get too busy. There you go. And sometimes you could even, now I'm really playing here. I'm just going to spray those. There you go and let those kind of be washy in the background. So they're just giving hints that there's some more flowers back there. Something like that. Just going in and touching in a little bit here and there, but you don't want to get too busy. Just using that to kind of Pick some of that up, and there you go. So I think that's pretty good. Um, I don't think I wanna do too much more than that. Um, maybe with the very light, could add in a few here in the background. I think we pretty much got it here. So anyway, I know it kind of looks like a mess, um, but do these kind of practices so that you can get used to playing with that water. Just add in this here. And those little dots making sure that's dry first. Okay. So boy, when you do this style of painting, you've really got to be able to kind of let go and let your painting be what it is. It's maybe a touch abstract for sure. And there we go. I think we're about done. I don't want to do any more than that because this could really get kind of crazy. And there you go. All right. I hope that was another example for you of playing some wet and wet. And um, I hope you give it a try. All right. Bye-bye.